Well, it came about because I got a call from my agent saying that Guy Hibbert had written a script um, uh, about torture, and uh, would I like to read it? And I said I'd very much like to read it. Um, so I went for a meeting, actually, first before they sent me the script. And after the first meeting, they decided it was worth sending me the script, and they sent me the script, and I read it and thought it was terrific. Well, the film's plot is very simple. Um, there is a man, Edward Akubo, who is uh, an MI5 officer, and he is sure in his heart that um, he is onto something with a young second generation Pakistani man living in London. He thinks that this man is planning some kind of terrorist attack. He's sure of it, but he doesn't have very much evidence. And he finds himself doubted by the people around him. They feel that Edward simply doesn't have enough evidence and is perhaps just reading too much into what he's seeing. And sure enough, Edward manages to find out that there is something going on, manages to get MI6 to track this young man to Yemen, where he says he's going. And he gives them the slip. He ends up in Egypt, and Edward is flown out to Egypt to interrogate him. When Edward arrives, things aren't quite what they seem, and he's got a few hurdles to go over, which are to do with sort of bureaucracy, to do with protection of human rights, and also to do with people perhaps not taking him as seriously as he would like. Certainly what this story is, is, is indicating is that the security services that are there to protect us in this country, and presumably it's similar all over the world, because these, these, these organizations are made up of individuals who are human, and they have their own personalities, they have their own traits, they have their own prejudices, they have their own ideas, and when you put a whole group of people together, they're going to make mistakes. And I think that is kind of what comes out of the film. You exchange emails with him. So that's why I'm in here then? No, you're in here because there's evidence. So wait, does emailing him make me a terrorist then, by association? No, it doesn't. So why are you asking me about him then? You're going to stay here until you tell me why you came to Cairo. If you look at the actual facts of what's written into the story, you can walk away feeling that Waleed is actually innocent. He's definitely got some problems with Great Britain, and as a lot of people have. But it doesn't make him guilty, necessarily. And I think there's a sense in which that when you hear that this aerosol can that's discovered at the end has been tested positive for ricin, that, you know, it says, well, that definitely means Waleed is guilty. But if you look at the script, that, you know, there is no evidence that he ever went in anywhere near that farm. It's true that maybe there was rice and found at that farm, but it may have nothing to do with him. And that, that's deliberate because we want to sort of talk about that issue. It doesn't make me guilty of terrorism by association or by having these beliefs. Does it make me... And that's the question we want to ask. Is it... Does it make you guilty? MI5 will certainly believe that, you know, he was up to something, but they just don't... They can't nail him now because of that. So they're implying that he's guilty. But I think there will, be a, there will be a group of people who watch this film who think he's not guilty. Why should he? You know, there's nothing actually really on him. And he's been released. We, we kind of want it to be uh, ambiguous uh, to an extent. But there is no getting away from the other side of that story, which is Edward, a man who has done everything he can. And yes, he shouldn't have authorised that torture. But the way in which the world around him was operating uh, made it very difficult for him not to do that. And once it's discovered that the, these aerosol cans have tested positive, as his colleague Tony says to him, it kind of, it kind of exonerates what he had done. And, uh, but then, equally, at the end of the film, it's discovered that the information that was gleaned through torture is incorrect. And so, actually, torturing was not only illegal in terms of the guidelines, um, but it, it didn't yield any results, which kind of makes sense in a way. I mean, I, you know, I don't know any terrorists, but I would imagine if you're fanaticized enough to go and blow yourself up, for example, you know, what, that's one thing you're prepared to do, um, then you might take a, a degree of pleasure in misleading the security services as they're chopping off your fingers. No, Jan Yanez, yeah. the director of photography, he's shot every bit of drama that I've worked on. I suppose that the way I would explain a sort of feeling of the film, we try to create this sort of atmospheric realism, is what I'd call it. It's, it's not lit as realism, it's sort of flat lighting, it's very moody. We try and exaggerate a little bit of what's really there. 
and what would be really there in the real world. So you notice that the backdrop for the, the Deputy Director General of MI5 as we're depicting her, it's got an office, it's a nice office, but it doesn't have a big view of the Thames and St Paul's, which is what, the kind of thing you'd expect to see in James Bond. And so Jan was involved very, very, very early on from we're choosing locations together, you know, we're looking at references together, deciding on the shooting style. That, yeah. In terms of the sort of pacing of the shooting and the atmosphere in the office, it's really humdrum. And that's what it is. It's not glamorous at all. And it's not, it's not fast paced and certainly guided extensive research. And I think that's what he wanted to reflect. So it would be impossible for me to put any of the Bourne or James Bond thing in there. From the very beginning, I wanted to keep as far away from that type of portrayal of the security services as possible. Because that's not what the script was. I mean, the script is a guy sitting around listening to really boring conversations with no evidence to go on and just a hunch. And we needed somebody to be able to fill the shoes of Edward Okubo in what we term a single point of view film in which he's in every single scene bar two. David is a terrific actor and well, my view is that he pulled that off magnificently.